um, welcome one more time, everybody, to the Mission Zero Academy webinar today. Um, today we are talking about food waste and optimizing MBT plants. And we are also visiting one of those plants that have been optimized for better, better performance on the ground in Lithuania. And today we have joining us uh, Domantas Strasevicius, uh, the head of the environmental NGO Siedin Economica from Lithuania, who will be showing us the plant um, and also giving us the background of of how it works and what has been happening there. And all the way in the end, we have also the deputy of the plant joining us. So if you have any more detailed questions, um, he's also welcome to welcome you to um, answer them. In the meantime, um, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions for us or for Domantas, use the Q&A function and we'll pick them up as we go. So thank you, Domantas, for joining us today and taking the time to show us around the plant. Um, would you like to um, have a moment to introduce yourself and what you do? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Domantas, and I'm very happy that you joined. So today we'll look at um, uh, possibilities to optimize MBTs. Now, you it's, it would be nice that we wouldn't have them at all, but uh, if we have them, we can use them and cheaply improve our system so that we could uh, treat separately collected uh, bio waste uh, much cheaper than building new one so okay let's see uh, guys could you give the control i think you should have the control okay let me see uh, no it doesn't seem to work so next slide, yeah. So first uh, we'll look at where is the litus and where is the litus MBT plan. So it's uh, in uh, east uh, in in the south of Lithuania. Uh, basically, Alitos is a city with uh, fifty thousand people. Uh, the whole it served the whole region where it's about uh, one hundred and thirty thousand, but it serves some few municipalities that are outside. So. It could be basically said it's a, it serves about 150,000 people in total, uh, accepting their residual waste and uh, a lot of other waste flows like uh, woody waste, bio, uh, uh, tree branches, uh, and also it has a lot of different points for uh, bulky waste. So next we can look at the plant itself uh, and mainly MBT plant parts. Uh, yeah, so first, it's, this is, is uh, the most, uh, uh, on your left side is uh, anaerobic digestion. In the middle, it's mechanical treatment. And on the right side, it's composting place, where green waste is composted. Also, uh, food waste is accepted. And after the anaerobic treatment, it is composted as well. Next. So now we see how the plant itself looks. It was built in uh, uh, 2013, a fairly new one, if I'm not mistaken, by Colibri in, from the Netherlands. So it's assembled at that time, uh, state-of-the-art technology. And uh, well, we'll see more it in more details. So oh, yeah. the first thank you for the question. lowdown. Could you first... Um... Tell us a little bit like how is it possible to transform an MBT to treat separately collected food waste and what has happened in this plant in particular? Okay, so first we'll see how the process look, it looks itself in the existing. So yeah, we, we have a consumer and of course he has waste, residual waste. Uh, now uh, that waste is being collected. It, it comes to mechanical part in the MBT plant. So yes, uh, in that, that mechanical part, we get some recyclables. Also, we get some part which is non-recyclable and it goes to sadly incineration. And also we get the organic part. And in this particular Alitos MBT, it's about 80 millimeters. Uh, uh, particles that are uh, smaller than 80 millimeters goes to anaerobic digestion where we get uh, 
biogas, of course, electricity, heat, and digestate. That digestate goes uh, for composting uh, to completely stabilize. And after the composting phase, it goes to, sadly, landfill. So we have a perfectly good bio waste that if it's together with other residual waste, it's, it, we, we can still get some energy back, but we lose it and we have to cover landfill instead of putting it to agriculture. Now, uh, let's move. Okay, why we should get that organics and why we should do better. So first, um, if we take the organics out, if we separate it at home, we get much, much cleaner residual waste. It, 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 it basically don't have any moisture. So it's opportunity to get more and better recyclables out of the residual waste. Of course, if we are not good at recycling, uh, but not good at separating packaging waste because a lot of those recyclables comes out of the package. Okay, also um, then uh, introducing separate uh, organics collection, uh, there's a tendency because uh, bio waste separation is the hardest uh, ways to separate. The, the uh, people tend to sort better and packaging, paper, glass. So it's opportunity to improve sorting in general. Next. Yeah, and of course, uh, this process happens uh, and without separate collection, but then we do the separate collection, it's more efficient. So we can do either composting or we can do, which is carbon neutral. So we don't negatively impact uh, our atm our climate or it's anaerobic or we do anaerobic digestion where we actually are carbon negative. So this means that uh, we can actually we get energy out of it. So we produce either biomethane, which is the, the highest uh, priority should be, especially today where we need to uh, change sources of uh, gas in our system uh, or we produce electricity, which is also a renewable source. Also, um, when we get uh, digestate from anaerobic digestion or uh, compost after composting, we can use it instead of mineral fertilizer. So uh, it's much more, I would say, friendly to the uh, climate uh, because mineral for mineral fertilizer, you usually need either a lot of rocks, uh, phosphate rock or gas itself which is very carbon intensive. Uh, when we use compost, we use it. And uh, another great benefit, it doesn't leach out uh, as a nitrogen into atmosphere. And of course, compost itself is sequestering carbon out of atmosphere. So it's five wins if we separately collect uh, organic matter. So this, how the scheme looks like, we, we, we already have like this. So then we introduce, uh, uh, separate collection, we have, of course, another bin where we put exclusively organic waste when we can use, we need to have some pretreatment before it goes to anaerobic digestion. So in this case, I showed uh, the packaging, uh, but this kind of machine is there and where you have very, very little impurities. Uh, in case at the moment in Alitos, we have shredder and I'll show it later. Okay, we have anaerobic digestion. We also have the same composting process, but in the end, we get a product, not something we put on a landfill, but something we put into agriculture, which actually could be sold for uh, money to actually make the process uh, cost less to the consumers. Next. So yeah, and to start this, we first of all need something to collect in it. So Alitos itself started in, uh, at the end of 2018, with 6,000 uh, containers, this uh, 120 liters, uh, but also it added some underground containers. So some of the reasons for people to sort are incentives. Here are, is an example from few cities in Germany, which shows that uh, the cost of residual waste, which is uh, called Restabfall and Biotone, and it is less money for bio waste. Uh, another great example would be in Italy, where we charge exactly zero euro for separately collected food waste. And here in the Lidos region, 
they uh, apply that uh, best practice. And here they also charge zero for food waste. And this help, helps to collect a lot of it because when you sort your uh, food waste, you save money. Next. Uh, another important thing for uh, citizens, to, uh, for, for policymakers in, in, in the city council is to decide wherever they do mandatory or not mandatory. So mandatory is the one which, which allows to achieve great results like in North of Italy, it's, uh, I would say best in Europe where you, you, you get results up to 120, 130 kilograms per capita. So non-mandatory, of course, depends when either you have quality control or not. If you have quality control, then you can sort of take that waste as a residual waste and make and charge more. The okay, next. Yeah, so in mandatory system, you can find people for non-sorting. And then, of course, as it is in Italy, uh, people do start sorting a lot better. And we need trucks. So on the left side, you can see a very specialized truck, which is then collected. It's actually increasing slightly, very slowly density. And well, it's, it's top of the class. So if you have opportunity, invest in that. If you don't, you take an old garbage truck and actually seal it so that uh, no liquids would get out. And, and it's also an option to use, very cheap option to use uh, to, 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 to separately collect or, or, or excuse me, organics. Next. And now we look at the actual purchase purchases that have been made in this MVT plant. So first of all, it's a shredder, which allows actually almost any material to get in. It's very universal. It's very, how would I say, uh, allowing some citizens to even put not good things and the system still works. Next. So yeah, then it's shredded, the bags are open, the organics are exposed as much as possible. They go to anaerobic digestion. In Alitus, we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, seven tunnels. We'll see it a little bit later. After it's being anaerobically digested, it goes to composting phase together with uh, woody screens uh, out of uh, previous composting, or some uh, branches are being added if needed. After it's composted, then we have a uh, sieving. So we remove the packaging, we remove the large uh, fraction and a small fraction. Usually it's very enough, sometimes additional Sieving is done, uh, uh, smaller fraction uh, to completely remove any impurities. But at the moment, the uh, star screen is working very well. So another screen is not used. So after it's compost, it's being used in agriculture. And at the moment, the demand for compost is very high because mineral fertilizer costs an arm and a leg. Great, um, thank you for this uh, rundown through what's what's happening at the plant and what should be happening. Um, can you then explain a little bit what are the costs and benefits and challenges of this transformation? You touched upon it a little bit earlier, but some details would be excellent going forward. Yeah, so we can look at the cost, the, the direct cost of the equipment. Of course, you can you you have all sorts of other costs, but this is the main cost. So the shredded cost uh, five hundred and forty thousand. See. One cost 240,000 and C2 cost 190,000 euros. So, in total, less than 1 million of direct cost. And for uh, this kind of a plant, for amount of 4,500 tons of food waste and increasing, it's really not a big investment. And if we look, this kind of a system could accommodate um, easily 50,000 50, tons of food waste, easily. But of course, it's not being collected, it's being increased. So, the biggest benefit is. Look, uh, in 2018, just as it started, uh, it had 37,000 uh, tons of residual waste. In okay, I, I saw I left a mistake. It should be not 2019, but it's 2021. So in three years, it decreased from 37,000 tons to 31,000 tons of residual waste and food waste. It had four and a half thousand tons. So uh, what? Uh, what it, what, what, what it shows that uh, it not only uh, residually decreased by the amount of food waste, it decreased also more. Mean that also people 
improved their recycling of probably packaging. Great, um, great benefits there and not too much of an investment. Um, then now that the organics are out of the system, could you explain us how can the residual treatment be further optimized when the organics are not there, like making everything dirty and complicating the matters? Yeah, sure. So we still have uh, the mechanical part. And well, there are many ways to optimize. And it, of course, depends on what uh, the plant's current equipment is, what it separates, and what the market for uh, different materials is. Uh, for example, this uh, plant in Alitus is trying to get a lot of paper. But if we look at the uh, next slide, uh, it doesn't separate any of the plastic packaging, and we can see the fractions. And uh, we see that uh, polyethylene is like almost two thirds of the remaining plastic uh, of of of, the, of uh, excuse me of the plastic in residual waste. So that means. Um, once they calculated that the market value is there to remove it, here it's the next investment here to remove polyethylene. Uh, of course, uh, another uh, another thing is creating demand for it, meaning changing policies that, uh, for example, you have to have forty percent of recycled uh, polyethylene in your packaging, or you pay additional fee. So this creates demand, and then plants like this invest money into it. Okay, let's go now. Uh, oh, okay, so small addition. It's always, when, when we talk about uh, organic treatment, it's important to know that uh, animal byproduct regulation and it's, how could I say, uh, possibilities to derog der derogate to use lower temperatures, meaning less than 70 degrees or one hour, uh, 12 millimeter sizes. So Lithuania accepted it, Germany, uh, Slovenia, Austria, Italy. Uh, Portugal has derogation. So other countries would follow and this makes the process cheaper. So now uh, we'll move to the plant itself to see parts how uh, actually the food waste is going around. So if you have questions, uh, uh, write them and I'll, on my way, I'll try to answer it. Yeah, thank you very much, Damandas, for this introduction. So yeah, like he said, now is a great time to ask any questions in the Q&A function. Um, in the meantime, the transition will take a minute or two, so it's not too long of a wait, and it's a great time to get your questions in and answer them as well. And uh, in this tour on the ground, we'll be following kind of the route of the um, bio waste. So we will start at the shredder. And yeah, you'll see how the machine works in practice over there. And uh, we have one question in the chat already. So um, what is your experience with impurities in the separately collected bio-waste, for example, plastics? And let's give um, Domandas a minute to get to the next destination, but um, any other um, questions are welcome at the same time. We are also taking them as we go. So if you have special questions about the shredder or the other places that we are visiting, which are the anaerobic digestion plant, um, also the composting site, the, the after um, AD composting site, and then finally the screening site. So those are the places we'll be seeing today in practice. And yeah, um, any questions on those will be welcome also while we are there. Um, so yeah, Domantas, if you can hear us, um, the question was about the impurities that you find in the separately collected bio waste. What's your experience with those? I think Domantas um, can't hear us at the moment. So let's see when he gets to the place and he can take the questions there. 
Also, there's another question. Um, do you run the biological treatment for both the residual waste and the separately collected um, bio waste? So, uh, so <laughs> you are the shredder. Uh, put the, the video on. Can you see it? Yes, we can. I don't hear the sound. Let me fix it. Okay, so uh, can anyone hear me? Yep. Okay, so uh, this is, we can see the waste itself. So more or less, it's being bought in like this, in a bags. Can you flip the camera around so we can see the place? Okay, sorry. Can you see it now or? Yes. Okay, so it looks like this, in a bags. Uh, uh, so, uh, then it's like this, it, uh, it can have a lot of stuff hidden inside. So, um, if it's not being, um, how could I say, uh, open, they're not going to be digested well. And also it can have an impurity such as maybe let's say, uh, metal, it can might even have large materials. So for this, it's very well to use a shredder, uh, which uh, can actually, how would I say, uh, not only open the bags, uh, but also not be afraid to uh, shred large particles. So after shredding, it's, uh, the whole materials are, how would I say, reduced to sizes and uh, using, uh, 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 dual shaft, it, it's, it's not afraid of anything that is inside. Even if it's a big metal part, it will shred it through. So once uh, the materials are being shredded, then it's being taken to the anaerobic digesters. So let's go further. Can you flip the camera again so people can see it? Okay. And also there's... Um... Question, do you run this biological treatment process both for residual waste and the separately collected bio waste in yes. parallel at the same plant? Yes, so that is something uh, I wanted to show that um, having tunnels uh, allows you uh, to, to run a uh, few processes at the same time. So uh, at some of the tunnels, uh, you have organic fraction of residual waste, and I'll show you how it looks. And some of the tunnels uh, are being used for uh, separately collected food waste. Your camera is off at the moment. Yeah, because I'm in a car, it's not, I cannot hold it. All right. Well, good. Um, so then earlier there was a question about the impurities that you find in the separate collected bio waste. So what's your experience on that? Uh, it, uh, well, it's it's various. It's it's of course uh, the plastic bags. It's uh, it's probably the main, and uh, then of course uh, mm, packaging. Plastic packaging is is, is the number one uh, number one impurity which is which is in here. Uh, but it's, it's uh, the 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 good thing with the shredder like this. It doesn't create uh, microplastics. It's not uh, abrasive. So after the process, after the composting process, you can actually uh, uh, get it out and re remove it. Good. Thank you for that. Um, there's another question. Um, is there a landfill levy um, applied to the stabilized organic uh, find from the MBT process, which are landfilled? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 in a landfill, and um, once it's being stable, once it's stable, it's of course uh, used. To, well, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, organics from residual waste, yes, it's being applied to the landfill. If we talk about separately collected. It's being used in agriculture. Yeah, and then there's, I guess, no taxes and things like that. 
Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so here is the tunnel and sorry for, so this is actually an organic part uh, out of residual waste. It's not really an organics anymore because we separately, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, here it is. So you can see that it's mostly uh, packaging, uh, which is comes as organic part uh, out of residual waste because we have food waste collected separately and then is being bought into these tunnels where it's digested anaerobically. Uh, so I won't stay long here, but a good thing that as, as it was uh, already mentioned that some of the tunnels are used for separately collected food waste. Some are for residual uh, for organics from residual waste. Uh, the capacity of the plant is for uh, 20,000 tons. Uh, and uh, it's being also, uh, since uh, there's not enough uh, organic waste, mm -hmm. uh, some of it uh, is being bought uh, food waste from uh, com commercial flows. So once the waste have been digested, then it's being taken uh, back uh, at the side back uh, where it's been accepted, uh, where it is mixed with branches uh, and over screens from the previous composting for composting process. Great, thank you. Um, there's a question from the audience. Um, could you please describe how the anaerobic digest and mixing food waste from uh, separation and from municipal solid waste. Um, so the production of that is continual. So the process of anaerobic digestion has to be continuous as well. But how to separate food waste input and input from municipal solid waste? So you use different tunnels. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's not a continuous, it's a batch process. It's a dry anaerobic digestion process, it's batch. So you have batch for uh, three weeks, you take it, uh, move it uh, to the next container uh, for another three weeks, and you never mix them. Uh, the good thing that I mentioned regarding anaerobic digestion, uh, well, sorry, animal byproduct regulation, is that uh, afterwards you can compost it and remove any pathogens that could have been, uh, that could have occurred uh, in case of the leachate mixing. Right. Um, so, and yeah, if you have any more questions, um, please uh, feel free to use the Q and A function. And I guess we are shortly arriving to the compost side. So once the shredded bio waste is going through the tunnels and anaerobic digested, then the stuff that comes yeah, out so of the the is now on. So we'll move to a location where food waste arrives and where it is mixed. So basically we can see the uh, heart of composting process. It's Windrow Turner, so no surprises here. As okay, oh. I need to walk around a little bit, sorry. Also, there's a lot of uh, uh, food waste, uh, sorry, and uh, wood waste being treated. And the interesting part that this wood waste, even if it has all kinds of sorts of it, uh, it's being shredded, it's being taken to Poland, it's being shredded again and used as part of um, uh, furniture. So here, this is something that comes out of the anaerobic digestion. Still has a lot of bags, pieces of uh, organic, but it's pretty much digested. 
So this kind of is mixed with over screens from the previous process. And if needed some branches, and when we have windrows like this, so for an, about another month, it's being composted. Once it has been composted, it goes to the star screen. And it has three fractions. So first is the top one. And this, uh, why is it the star screen? Star screen allows uh, to treat rather wet material. And also it allows to remove, um, what would I say, uh, packaging, something that stays on the very top. And we can see that all of those packaging from the anaerobic part is here. This is the fine part, and it's really good quality. So it's 20 millimeters. And here is the over switch, which has some uh, parts of plastic, but it's mostly the woody, play, woody uh, branches uh, that can be used in the process again for composting. Whew. Okay, so now I'll try to leave back uh, for questions at the base where we started. Great. Um, thank you. Um, you already answered the question about the, the contaminants that we could see in the, in the early stages of the process. Um, there's a question from the audience. Does the um, wood waste go to biomass burning? So the um, piles of wood that we saw. Could you please repeat it? I didn't understand. So the wood, um, the woody materials that we saw as piles, does it go to biomass burning or somewhere else? No, no, no. It uh, goes, look, uh, this wood doesn't go to burning. This wood goes to furniture production. Great. Um, good to hear. Let's see if there are any other questions. Now would be a good time to submit them. Um, there's a, another question about the quality of the compost. So for example, um, apart from the stuff that it gets sieved out. So for example, heavy metals, can you sell the compost to farmers or do you have to pay the farmers to take it? And um, can you also accept uh, food waste from the food industry like restaurants and places like that? Yeah, so first to look at the impurities. So uh, with the heavy metal, there basically are none uh, because it, it comes from well, the, the, the ones we're talking about separately collected, they, they, there is no heavy metals. It's, it's something that we eat. So, and not many impurities come. Maybe some people would put like batteries, a lot of batteries, uh, maybe that then could be more, but, but not, not in this case. Um, so regarding uh, plastic packaging, uh, there is some plastic, but it's being almost all removed. And then we uh, date by the percentages. It's uh, a lot less than than 2% that it's currently the standard. And I think it's uh, uh, closer closer to one or, or, or even half a percent. So it's being used uh, in farms uh, and uh, at, uh, I think the last time I checked it was 20 euro per ton, uh, and it's being bought by the farmers. So the farmers pay for the compost? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a very good compost. It's out of uh, food waste, which uh, uh, has a lot of nutrients. Uh, a lot more if we look at only green waste uh, compost. Because they also sell a green waste compost and they sell it uh, slightly cheaper. Because, of course, it doesn't require all sorts of uh, treatment processes. Uh, you, you just shred it and then compost it for 
maybe about 12, 12 weeks. But, uh, but, but here it's, it requires a lot of moving for, uh, to front and, 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 and back. And, and of course, it uh, requires removing uh, the, uh, the, the, the plastic packaging. But, but in general, it's uh, food waste compost. It's, it's the best that it's possible to get uh, for, for your plants. Right, that's interesting info. Um, what about the food waste from the food industry? Can you accept that there as well? Yes, and it is being accepted. Uh, and I know obviously digestion. Yes. Uh, the good, the good thing that that it's almost you don't uh, need the uh, treatment. Uh, mm -hmm. You just uh, shred it, and it's it's ready. Um, good to hear. Thank you for that. Um, so, um, in the closed anaerobic digestion tunnels, in order to irrigate the organic in decomposition, do you segregate the leachates from the mixed municipal solid waste from bio waste? And which liquid do you use to irrigate um, the bio waste in decomposition? Okay, that is a very good question. And now we're back. And here's the deputy, Justice. Klaus was del del nefiltrato or del tarcolato, del tos kisha kuris laistomas. Are you saying something else or not? Yeah, but 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 so in the in this system, uh, that leachate does not mix. Yeah, and do you irrigate the um, bio waste with something um, in the decomposition? Are you real isomers? The so called juvesti process. The isomers are so for the for the shit that. Yeah, constantly are being uh, sprayed on just to inoculate and to keep the required moisture for the process. And what liquid do you use? Uh, the, that goes out itself. Uh, yeah, the, the same that uh, leaches out. So it's made that uh, in specific tunnels uh, for separately collected food waste, the liquid system doesn't mix with the liquid system from uh, organics from residual uh, waste collected. Great. Um, thank you. And yeah, now we have the deputy of the plant um, here with us. So if you have any detailed questions about the plant and how it functions, now is the best time to get those questions answered. Um, so um, there is a question about the collection style um, of the organics. So Italy heavily promotes the use of biodegradable plastic bags to collect the, collect the food waste, and Germany doesn't want the biodegradable plastic bags in their composting plants. So what is Lithuania doing to collect the food waste? Um, okay, soon going to be sitting down. And Klausimas buvo dėl, kas yra naudojama surinkimui pačioti, kokie maišeliai, ar yra skatinama, ar nieko neskatinama. So, in, in general, I would say uh, that um, it, it, it depends on the process that you are pretreated, uh, but here, um, since the process is universal, you can use compostable and non-compostable bags, it doesn't matter. At the end, something that has not been composted, it's going to be sieved out. So we don't uh, uh, single out any, uh, any particular bag type. The most important that it would be comfortable for people. Okay, so you don't have a um, preference apart from the user experience side? Yes. It I is being recommended to use the bags in the summer period because, of course, uh, due to heat and 
possibilities of uh, vermin and, and, and insects. Good, thank you. Um, we have still um, 15 minutes for questions, so let them roll in as and when you have them. Um, there was a question earlier about doc excre excrements. Um, they are collected and they usually end up in the mixed waste. Um, do you have a better idea how to manage those? Klausi dėl šunų kakučių dažniausiai patenka į mišės kaunganės atlikas. Koks pas, pas, koks šis pradėtas? Tas pats, nes mes nerinėjimai su ne. Same, it's, uh, uh, from my experience, it's animal uh, byproduct uh, category 2. So it doesn't go in. Okay, let's see if we have some other questions there. Maybe since we have the plant manager here, what would be the next steps? Like what would be the dream how to develop this plant further in the next few years to make it even more efficient? Well, um, Didinti pajėgų manis pralinis, kaip ir per mažus. Kurios? Visi tuneliai jau yra užimti. Ir mes dar turim maisto, kurį, kuris laukia. So the capacity of biological treatment uh, is now being almost used up. So in the future, uh, to increase the capacity. Uh, because uh, uh, we see that potential there's to add more uh, food waste. Good. Um, and while we're talking about the more input into the plant, also there will be more output. How do you see the, the market for the application of the compost that co comes out of the plants? Um, how do you see that evolving? Uh, Vadinkim, poreikis komposto keitėsi ir kaip jis gali būti atrodyti kitie? Aš manau, kad didesnis, prašau, kaip kaibos sofos, čia žmonės tikrai daugiau pirks vaisto atlieku negu žaliųjų. Uh, so, it, the plan manager says that it's going to be increasing because due to, due, due to price, the, the mineral fertilizer price are now, well, it, it increased in a period of year maybe three times, so it's, it is going to, to increase. So there's a good market for what, as much as you can produce. Um, going back to the contamination question that we touched upon earlier, is there any contamination issues in the final compost with like fruit stickers and those little plastic rings in bottles and some other small pieces like that? Um, Klaus Adel pačiam jau produkte, už, už kretimo, tai yra, nu, ta, tam yra priemus. nustatytas tas vibracijas, tai vis tada išėti. What I haven't showed you uh, is also additional installation that they are preparing. Uh, they have a, um, how do you say, gravitational sieve additionally added. It's now being experimentally tried, but that uh, would solve all of that. Uh, uh, but for that, uh, they need to tested and uh, have a very dry material. But that is something in the future. Great. Also, what I would like to add that um, some of the compost uh, is being packaged and sold for retail. Good. Um, thank you. So further improvements coming already. Um, yes, and the plant manager has gone through the whole process of making this transformation. Could he maybe explain a little bit how it went um, as a process and especially with the stakeholders that they had to convince and maybe themselves also that they had to convince to make this transition. So how did it go? Uh, Klaus, what this is the process, the scale is more Amba, iki atskirai surinkamu maisto. Ar buvo sunkus, ar reikėjo įtikinėti, pavyzdžiui, ten savo valybę papildomai investuoti, ar... Čia pradžius daugiau papasimu. Manau, kad aš tikrai buvo delegantis čia. Įkalbėjęs savo valybės, kad atskirai vis mes mėnė pirmoji, pagal Lietuvai. Daugiau gal, gal ir dar šiandien indinių delegantis. Taip. Lietuvai surinkinėjęs tikrai. 
Yes, the, the, the most difficult part was uh, talking with the municipalities um, that to start because this location is the first uh, which has a full scale working separate food waste collection in Lithuania. Starting at the end of 2018 as a, as, a, as a small capacity now expanded through almost all the region. And as, as was previously mentioned, would expand further, but the capacities are now close to to the limit. Uh, the thing is that, yeah, so with each municipality, you have to convince it to start it because in the beginning it does it does cost. Great. Um, we have lots of people usually in our webinars who either work in the municipalities or in the civil society trying to convince municipalities to make this transition. So could he maybe share his three best tips how to convince the municipalities to make this transition? <laughs> okay, so he was not responsible for all the political uh, wrangling, so more in, uh, if there are questions on production. Great. Um, is there anything else that he would like to tell us that are maybe something that are worth sharing to our international audience? <laughs> There's a good compo good quality compost. So if, if if you put the processes right, then then you get a good 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 product. Yeah. Srautai, kaip atrodo nu, dabar tas e, mišios komunalinės atsakos? Gerokai, sausesnės. So, uh, residual waste are now much, much drier. Ar daugiau pavyksta atgauti popieriaus, e, plastiko, kitų dalykų? Ar, ar pagerėti? Tas pats, nes aš šito tai nelabai ne, ne čia jau pasakyti. Sudėjom sytus didesnius ruožiavimo linijų, tai dabar didesnė dalis, dar didesnė dalis važiuoja į biologiją kompostavimą, kas anksčiau važiuodavo su plastiku į deginimus. O tada tas, tas plastikas į biologiją kas po to savo buvo? Maišo arba su maisto. Tai ne, į biologiją plastikas nevažiuoja. Taip. Biologija važiuoja tik tais tas mulki dalis ir jos gerokai padaugėjo padidino sytų, sytus didesnėms kylėms. Dabar mes padarėm nuo, nuo didžiausių iki mažiausių pakeitėm, o buvo visos vienodos. So, uh, there were changes in some screens, uh, which now separates smallest to the largest. But what is more important? padidėjo tos mineralinės dalies, kur važiuoja į biologiją. Bet ką tik įčia? Plastikai švaresnė į deginimą. Mm -hmm. Svoris mažesnis. So now uh, they take, they are able to take more of the packaging to the anaerobic digestion and in anaerobic digestion it's possible to, re, to digest the organic part and make those plastics uh, cleaner and drier so that they could get more value before it's being shipped to incineration. Great, thank you. We have still a couple more minutes uh, to a couple more questions. So if you have them now, it's a good time to ask. Um, there is one more question. Um, do the tunnels for the organic municipal solid waste run, run the same receipt or the um, process as uh, for the bio waste, for example, the residence time and all that? Kiek yra laiko laikomos priimtos, atskirai priimtos, atskirai surimtos virtuos atlikos tunelėse ir kiek laiko yra laikomos atsijos tos iš mišių komandų? Jis vis tiek maišo kraunu to pačiu metu. Jau nėra tie, kad mes kaupu atsilaisim nuo tunelis, tai jis savaitę du, kažkur tunelį, vienas du tunelį kaudusi. O kiek laiko maš daugiau? Apie 30 dienų. A, abu irgi, ta prasme, tiek pat. Taip. 
So each of them are being held about 30 days. Okay, thank you. And it depends also from the temperature. Okay, so it, it, it also depends from the temperature. If the temperature is high, the process is happening, so it's, being, it, it's allowed to stay longer. If the temperature is lower, of course, it's taken out. So, but, but on average, it's about 30 days. Great. Um, thank you. Um, so this plant was the front runner in Lithuania. And usually we see that when somebody does something cool and impactful and efficient, um, everybody wants to replicate it. Um, are you seeing similar plants running elsewhere in Lithuania or in the neighboring countries based on your example? I'll try to answer that. Uh, I know that a lot of people, plant managers come here and uh, look at it. Also, uh, the Ministry of Environment funds uh, transition of MBTs to also accommodate separately collected food waste. It also, it, it might be anaerobic digestion like here, or it is composting like in others. Great, thank you. Um, so there is a, in Germany, there is a limit how much um, like impurities are, especially plastic is allowed in the landscaped areas and it's between one and 0.5%. Do you know the plastic content of your um, output material and would those limits be met? Up to one and a half percent, not more. Okay. Okay. Uh, about this, sometimes smaller. And do you see the conditions why it's sometimes smaller and sometimes higher, or is it just um, pure luck? No, it couldn't be derived the, the reasons for that. Okay, thank you. Um, can you also share the operational costs, so euros per ton uh, for the bioways uh, processing? No, it is not, uh, how to say, responsible for, for, for the pricing. Um, uh, at some point uh, for the companies, it was 40 euro per ton to take in, but it was um, for all kinds of, including uh, animal byproducts uh, for people separately collected. I think that is a little bit lower, closer to something like 30. Okay, thank you. Um... Can you, like, now that we have got the organics out of the residual waste, is there any plans, like we spoke about the plastics further, what, what would be the next steps in the plastics or other materials separated from the residuals? Like, what are the development plans plans for the residual fraction now? Plastic <laughs> Yeah, so as I showed the picture, the, the thing would be next for the plastics, but uh, nothing concrete yet. Okay, thank you. Um, if there are still more questions, we have four minutes to go, so um, still time for one or two. Um, so what would be needed for others to replicate this? First, political will, a very, I would say, a very small uh, in, in investment, uh, considering the whole uh, plant usually costs a lot more. So if you already have a plant, so a shredder, and sometimes you already have a screener too. So depends from the impurities uh, you either need uh, star disk screen, star screen, or you can use 
trauma screen if the impurities are very, very low. Great. Um, what about the people side of it? Um, you needed to train people to treat their organics in a different way in, at houses. What did you do there? Some leaflets. And that was enough. Informacinė kampanija dar kažkokia buvo. Na taip, parodosi dar kažkaip reikiniuosi, turėdavo pavadinė mūsų pasakyti. So, uh, quite some time in advance, where always was information, participation in public events, presenting how to do it, the importance of it, also in uh, local uh, newspapers, information about it, and of course, leaflets on how to do it. Also, uh, there are um, lessons uh, for school children. Some of them are songs, no? and sometimes for adults, uh, how to correctly separate your waste. And of course, here in the reuse center, we also see all the other uh, important things that can be done with waste or that how can they be used and also exchanged. Right. And um, are there some inspections for the food waste bins in the households um, for contamination or wrong sorting? And if yes, is there also fines or other punishments or incentives um, if wrong sorting is, is seen? Uh, yes, uh, it's being checked. And if the sorting is bad, you get a sticker. If it repeats, well, you get another sticker and that waste are being not taken out. Great. Um, thank you for that. And um, we are running out of time. It's getting to three o'clock here in Central Europe. So thank you very much for both of you for answering uh, showing us around, sharing your wisdom and your experience in making this transition happen and showing that um, getting your organics game to the next level can be quite simple and not so expensive as many people thought. So thank you everybody for participating. Uh, we put the recording and the presentation up on the Mission Zero Academy website for future uh, reference and we thank you all for participation and thank you Domantas for organizing all of this. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.